Hello and welcome back again. I say this every time. If you've not been before, where have you been? Welcome, people. Is I've, I've just got back from a 185 mile trip in the Tesla. So this is why I'm sitting here now thinking, let's get this video started. Earlier today, I came across yet another denier of EVs. And it was a gentle conversation and a light debate. And I asked him why he didn't want to buy an EV. And it was like looking at the bingo card. Now, if you've never seen the bingo card, I'll show it you later on after this introduction. But the first thing he said to me was, they don't do the range. I said, well, what kind of range do you do? Anyway, we got into a conversation. I said, and if they did the range, what would be the next thing that you, you, you would be against EVs for? And he said, oh, how long it takes to charge. Okay, all right. So if we could get round that, what would be the next thing that you would not have an EV for? And it went on and on. And within about 10 minutes, I got about five excuses why this guy wouldn't want an EV. And they were all old, five to 10 year old excuses. Um, and so I'm going to get straight into number one here. And that's range. Well, as promised, here's the bingo card. This is a smaller cut down version. There is a bigger one than this, would you believe? This is for all the people who've got their dobber in hand that can dob off as many as possible. And I'm quite sure there'll be some full houses out there from some very negative people. Now, yeah, I'll stay with the bingo card because I love it. Let me circle some of the favourites. Takes weeks to charge it. No, it don't. They're slow. No, they're not. They're fast. Exploding batteries? Never seen one explode. Hydrogen is the next best thing? It isn't. Never will be. Where is it then? Show me. It's been 10 years the same as EVs. Not happened yet. Battery won't last more than two or three years. That's a classic. And probably one or two more. Let's have a look here. All EVs are too expensive. Well, they're not. There's a good second-hand used market now. And cobalt in batteries. My car has no cobalt. Now, as regards the range thing, let's just put this into perspective here. Range was always against EVs from day one, because let's face it, the first mass produced real car that hit production for the UK market and for Europe and for the world really was the Nissan Leaf. That was made with a 24 kilowatt hour battery. Now with that in mind, a, a fast 70 down the motorway, 70, 75, you were lucky if you got 50 miles out of that thing, especially on a cold day, tiny bit more at lower speeds. Obviously, if you kept 55 in the summer, you could push it to about 75, 80 mile. That was the range. That was it. So the first people who looked at EVs went, nah, that, it'll never work. The range is rubbish. Well, we've moved on since then. So that range argument, because of those very first EVs in 2010, 11, 12, even up to around 2014, were rubbish. And I'd be the first to admit that. And so there were very, very limited use vehicles. Now that argument does not exist anymore and shouldn't exist. So anyone who says that in an argument against EVs, pretty much to me is talking BS. So let's just move off the range because I think it's been kind of beaten now by a modern EV. Most modern EVs will do 200 to 400 mile range. Now, when it comes to my USA friends, you might need a bit more range. You, you, you do a few more miles a day. And I know that you do longer road trips, but please stop. 150 mile, 200 mile down the road, have a stop, have a coffee, stretch your legs, bang it in a charger somewhere. And my phrase, my new modern phrase to finish this range one off is that you, you don't stop to charge you charge when you stop. If you remember that, plan your journeys. There's no reason at all that you need any more range in around, especially in the UK, that this has got. 200 to 250 mile per charge. Move on to number two. Number two, charging speeds. It takes too long to charge. I'm not sitting at a charger for two or three hours. And these all relate back to what it was five to ten years ago, even sometimes three years ago. But we've moved on so fast in EV land. Now, here's an example of some American and European charge times in the cars. What you're looking at here are cars now, never mind in two to four years time when the speeds and recharge times get even quicker faster and I do believe they'll be 300 mile in 10 minutes. So charging speeds are another one that really you cannot use as an excuse anymore when it comes to not wanting an EV. So charging speeds are another one kicked up to touch, finished. Now remember that bingo card and the silly one on the top left there look let's have a look at this. 
Nissan is now building batteries for the Nissan LEAF at its new electric vehicle battery plant in Smyrna, Tennessee. The new battery plant means hundreds of new jobs in the U.S. Workers at the new facility say that entering their workplace is like going into outer space. The technology is advanced. The atmosphere is extremely clean and relatively quiet for a large manufacturing facility. And the final product seems so complex, it's hard to believe humans came up with it. Much of this facility is so high-tech, we cannot show it to you. Now, I've used the Nissan Leaf as a very good example of degradation. There are plenty of these still on the road today, still being used daily for grocery getting, school trips and everything else. So don't be put off by them, but they were one of the worst because they did not have a BMS. Now, moving on to more modern batteries and with a brilliant software package behind them, a BMS, um, you'll see here, look, only 7% lost by a Volkswagen after 60,000 miles. Now, this gets better even with Tesla. Tesla is renowned for its batteries and that only lost around 14% on average after around 200,000 miles on their vehicles. Okay, staying with this battery degradation thing, I'm going to finish off with a few lines. That is that, you know, don't let people think that were back in 2010, 2011, 2014, 2015, were not. 2024 next year, folks, it just shows to prove how much we've come on in battery tech. And there's so much gonna happen in the next two to four years that will blow your mind regarding batteries and even mine. So don't let battery degradation uh, impose on you too much regarding not buying an EV. It doesn't exist anymore to a point. So you're always gonna have your odd lemon, just the same as you are when you buy a, an ice car. That's going to happen, folks, but let's put it in perspective here and realise that battery degradation nowadays on a new modern EV, especially the Teslas and the top range spec ones, in fact, all of them, I'm going to put it out there, all of them, is excellent now. It don't happen. So don't use it as an excuse on not to buy an EV. Well, let's get this thing regarding expensive EVs. Now, I would freely admit that maybe seven years ago, eight years ago, the average EV was an expensive toy. And even I wouldn't expect to buy one brand new. The problem is people and the average ICE driver who may be watching this now thinking about buying an EV and why I'm doing this video, looks at EVs and goes, oh, look at that Porsche Taycan. Look at that Tesla Plaid. You know, look at that uh, EQS Mercedes. Well, I'm afraid this is where you're going wrong. You need to stop looking at these things and then seeing the price of 60, 70, 80, 90, 120,000 dollars and pounds and get real. Rich price of a car now, a mid to top spec car, you can see here. Yeah, that's it. this is for a normal, regular petrol car, but a good brand top spec car. So the price comparability is now there. It has been reached for EVs. With an example of the MG4 at 25,000 brand new from a dealer, 24, 22 even X demo at around six months registered, there's your bottom price for brand new with seven, eight year warranty and a great little EV that can do nearly 200 mile. So the price is not really the problem now. I think it's this mental thing that people still think that they are expensive cars. Well, they are not any longer. Also, of course, you've got an excellent used market. Now, that used market really was not there three to five years ago. Because of the very minimalistic sales of EVs back in the day, you didn't have a real heavy used market. Well, EVs are selling very well now in a lot of countries. Some countries are averaging between 16 to 20 percent of all new vehicles being EVs. So the used marketplace is excellent. So you can get now a 2019 Model 3, for example, standard model with an option of a paint and some posh wheels that someone's put on it for around 26 to 27,000 pounds. That is not high big money for what you're getting in return. You can also get a used Hyundai Kona, 64 kilowatt battery or thereabouts or 60 plus, giving you 300 mile range nearly for under 20,000 pounds. I've seen them as cheap as 16 here in the UK. I just bought my wife a little red Seat. Now, people who watch this channel will know all about this. I've done a couple of videos on it. Go find them. There, look, there's two I can point out to you. Go and have a look at them. 
on the channel. That thing was two years old, 21 plate, two, literally two years old to the day we bought it. We paid 10,000 pounds for it. Try and find a two year old ice car for around 10,000 in the condition that is. So if you're gonna buy an EV, look at the used market. If you don't wanna buy used, there's some out there now from 25K up, brand new with full warranty. And they are no longer expensive. So don't use that as an excuse not to buy one. Okay, here's, here's another favorite off the EV, EV uh, bingo card. <laughs> They're worse for the environment. I go through many a debate with people around the world regarding this one. I don't know really where to start on this. I, I will start with the Volvo report that came out about two years ago uh, that was silly to themselves and they were saying that their EV, that particular EV they were making at the time, because of constraints and money not going into it and all the rest of it and the way they were manufacturing it, it would take that EV 70,000 miles before it paid for its own environmental impact and carbon footprint. Then after that, for every mile, you'd be on the plus side over any petrol car. Well, this was very, very detrimental to Volvo because they made a boo-boo by saying all this. And obviously the way they were manufacturing and the way they were producing that vehicle really didn't have the same impact as say Tesla at the time or some others that were coming on board. And I will take one straight the way. That was the BMW i3 that was already being made. A lot of that car came from used materials, compound structures from waste materials. Also, the BMW factory where the i3 was made had a lot of solar panels and a lot of renewable energy used to make that car. And it's the same as Tesla now. They do the very same. Near enough, all their gigafactories and all their production facilities are full solar panel roofs, just as an example, with battery backup. So there's a lot to take on board uh, without getting too technical. People are talking now, there is still a 10,000 mile attribute to this before you start being green. Well, 10,000 mile is nothing. Here in the UK, 10 to 12 is the average. So in one year's motoring, using full electric power, you are very, very clean in comparison to any fossil fuel car. So I'm gonna say 10,000. To say from zero, I'm pushing the boat out a bit and someone might call me. So the argument of them being worse for the environment has now been kicked into touch. Don't think three, five, 10 years ago. Think today and think tomorrow because that argument can no longer be used when it comes to not buying an EV. Okay, this one, I'm gonna turn this round actually before, this is what I'm actually editing. See that one there, look? Yep, I don't know where they get this from. This is my last, well, one but last. It's the sixth excuse you've read there. They explode and catch fire. Well, hold on folks, let's just put this into perspective. Now, I'm not gonna to go too deep because I could spend an hour lecturing about this and I'm not going to, I'm not here to lecture. Just to say facts, because my channel is based on facts that I know to. The EV fires that are all over the media at the moment are very, very rare. It takes one EV fire to hit the Daily Mail, to hit the Sun, to hit the LA News, to hit Fox News, CNN, wherever you are in the world. And there are some more media outlets that will make a massive thing of it than a lesser thing. Now, here in the UK, every single day, there are 300, 300 a day, fossil fuel fire, ice car fires, petrol and diesel car fires. 300 a day, that's 100,000 a year. EV fires, again, super rare, very, very minimal figures. Now, you're thinking, oh, well, there's a lot more ice cars than there is EVs. If you had a million EVs up against a million ice cars, it is 20 times more likely for the fossil fuel car to catch fire and go up in flames than it is the EV. So if you look at that way, it means that the EV is 20 times safer than any fossil car made today, stroke ice car made today. So let's put this in the right perspective here and get the stats right. 
So when you see something on media about an EV catching fire and a Tesla, because they love the Teslas catching fire. Oh, do they love it. And they explode everywhere. And you know, you're, doing, you're just driving along and all of a sudden they explode. I can honestly say I've never seen one. I've seen the odd one that's been in a serious accident and the battery has been you know, damaged and it's just fizzled a bit and then caught fire. I understand that. No worse than you know, a, a petrol car with a leak underneath that will catch fire. And I've seen a lot of buses as well at the moment which have been natural gas powered buses and they've been made out in the media to be electric and they've not, they're just not. And so there's a lot of fake news out there. So don't believe the media hype coming from big oil and the very ignorant on YouTube and TikTok who see one picture, get another picture and another and put it all in one and say, EV fires are killing everybody and don't buy one, they're terrible. Don't believe the media hype. EV fires are very, very rare and the Tesla, as an example, the Model Y and Model 3 are two of the safest cars you can buy in the world. Not just in America, not just in the UK, in the world. You know, I've got two EVs out there now which are superb in, in the, both their different ways. Have, has one of them exploded yet or caught fire? No. So there you go. That's my take on the explode and catch fire malarkey. An absolute load of BS. So it can't be used. There's an excuse not to buy an EV. Okay, this brings us gently on to hydrogen. Hydrogen is not going to work on personal transport. So, if you are sitting on your bum waiting for it to happen, I'm going to wait for hydrogen because I don't want an electric car. Hydrogen's the best way forward. It's cleaner. It's just water out the exhaust. And I'm afraid that you will be waiting all of your life and pass off this myrtle coil without ever, ever having an alternate fuel vehicle. Okay, to save me getting technical and telling you all about hydrogen and why it will not make the grade over a normal regular BEV powered car, go to hivepower.net. This is it here that you're looking at now on the screen. Goes into a few details, gives you six good reasons why hydrogen will never, ever beat a regular EV car. I've, I've looked into hydrogen many, many times and a lot of homework on hydrogen and it's not an efficient fuel. Now, before I go further, it might be great for mass big plant of 50 tonne, 60 tonne vehicles in quarries and even some commercial vehicles on the roads. It will not be good, however, for personal transportation for me and thee. Now I say this because let's just look at where we are as we speak here now with only one other alternative over diesel and fuel and so-called petroleum fluids and that is electric. Big oil has owned you and me. Now I say this because hydrogen will work the same way. You will use the same service stations as you do now. You'll probably use a similar pump but in the same location. It will be delivered by similar vehicles and the people who will own it and put their money into it will be BP, Shell, Exxon, Esso. Ask yourself why, as you can see in this graph, it's fossil fuel companies that are spending huge amounts of dollars and pounds lobbying in Congress in the USA. And all the rest of the tyrants, and all the rest of big oil. So even with hydrogen, okay, you will still be dictated where you buy it from, when you buy it, how much you pay for it, if you get it at all, when it's delivered, whatever whatever with electricity there is none of that you can fill up at home if you want to you can fill up when you shop you can fill up when you go out for a coffee you can top up down the services down the motorways down the freeways of life without being dictated to it's your option in which charger you want to use with oil stroke big oil and hydrogen you will lose that freedom that electric gives you Name me one other thing that you could charge up at home with. There isn't one. You'll never do it with hydrogen. You'll just give the power back to big oil. Well, that's it, people, for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. A bit of EV bingo. If you've not seen the EV bingo card before, go check it out. There's two or three on the internet. I will be back and I will do another five or six off the card and give you the reasons why I think that the EV bingo card is such a laughable thing with these Luddites. Anyway... I've got to say goodbye because I'm now going down to Heathrow in the Tesla to take my uh, lad and my sons who's gone to South Africa again. So uh, I better get on. I'm going to catch you all later. Subscribe. <laughs>